Mm -hmm. Hi guys, you can see how excited my little dog is to be here listening to me rant here uh, on what started out as a nice day but is turning into a gloomy winter day here in the end times in paradise. You need to wake up. Do you need some coffee or what? This little dog will not get out of bed today. Uh, Anywho, it is getting to be a gloomy winter day here on Groundhog Day. It looks like the little groundhog is telling us six more weeks of winter. So Groundhog Day, that makes it Friday, February 2nd, 2018, where I have got to get back out to giving myself a hernia. Uh, good God, moving all of this crap out to the landfill. Uh, so I need to wrap up my ecological meltdown roundup rant for the week. I just finished part one of my of my rant over there at mongabay.com, and now we're going to go to part two. We're going to check in with those eco Nazis over there at the Washington Post environmental desk for their roundup and then head over to Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth newsletter, looking at the various ways uh, this planet has been heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour while I've been uh, giving myself hernias loading garbage into trucks. So you can go back to bed, I guess. One more rant. And then we will go outside and you can get that squirrely out there like that. You can go outside and get that squirrely. Where's that squirrel? You say, Pop, I need to get that squirrely like that. All right, let's dive into the Washington Post energy and environment. We'll go out squirrel hunting in a minute. You need to hold on. I got one more rant. <clears throat> and of course, you know, the Washington Post, uh, who do you think is driving the planet into a brick wall at 77,000 miles an hour? That would be Donald Trump, where we just see the headline, the no shit Sherlock headline of the week. They're saying White House instead of Donald Trump. I don't know what that's about. White House seeks 72% cut to clean energy research, underscoring Trump administration's preference for fossil fuels. No shit, Sherlock. And these new federal documents also suggest substantial cuts to Rick Perry's energy department staffing. No shit, Sherlock. Alright, it looks like, is Scott Pruitt actually doing his job? Good Lord, uh, you know, he act, this is the second time this week. Maybe Scott Pruitt ate some uh, psilocybin mushrooms last week as we see EPA orders cleanup at St. Louis nuclear waste site. Jesus. Uh, uh, and what does this mean for the nation's other toxic messes? Could it mean that the Environmental Protection Agency is going to do something? Well, let's don't get too far out of line, how about uh, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt wants a partial excavation, a middle ground remedy of the West Lake Landfill in St. Louis. Uh, which is expected to cost the two companies responsible for the mess about $236 million. But, uh, <laughs> uh, as uh, I was going to put this, 
uh, in tomorrow's ramp, but I'm glad to see it here. They show this picture uh, of Donald Trump uh, and his old buddy Scott Pruitt. As long as we're talking about EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt, <clears throat> Scott Pruitt said Donald Trump, quote, would be more abusive to the Constitution than Barack Obama. And that is saying a lot. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I could not have said it any better. Uh, Scott Pruitt, sounding like, like Hambo and Littletail, Donald Trump would be more abusive to the U.S. Constitution than Barack Obama. And, and, and that really is hard to, to be. Uh, and, and of course, Hillary Clinton uh, would have also been more abusive to the U.S. Constitution, n not, not in even mentioning uh, the planet, uh, than that fucking hypocrite, uh, warmongering criminal Barack Obama. But my God, in one year, Donald Trump has shredded the U.S. Constitution uh, and the planet more in one fucking year than Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton combined have ever done in their fucking lives. So anyway, but minutes after the EPA chief finished testifying before a Senate panel Tuesday, the agency released an effusive Pruitt statement calling Donald Trump, quote, the most consequential leader of our time. Yeah, he most certainly is uh, the most consequential leader of our time. Once again, you hit the nail on the head. Donald Trump is, is has in, in, in unleashed more in it, catastrophic ecological consequences on planet Earth in one year uh, than any other world leader has done in their entire political careers. That is exactly what uh, the uh, Constitution abuser in chief Donald, Donald Trump is the most consequential leader of our time. All right. You know, these little emojis, you know what emojis are? I, I've never used a fucking emoji in my life. I would have no idea how to use an emoji even if I wanted to use one, but I do kind of like this one. Anxious about climate change there is now a cow farting methane emoji for that. It has a picture of a cow with blowing a brown cloud of methane out of its asshole with a pile of <coughs> a pile of cow shit uh, underneath. Okay, what is going on? We've talked enough about uh, we've talked enough about that little fucktard Scott Pruitt. What's going on? How is 2018 shaping up for that poor little horseman of the apocalypse, Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke? It's been a rough year for Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke. And it's still January. Well, this was written the last day of January. As Ryan Zinke faces anger from governors, including many Republicans, over his proposals to allow more drilling on land and at sea. No shit, Sherlock. There you go. Okay, I don't know if this is Ryan Zinke or or uh, 
or Scott Pruitt or which one of them anyway. It's Donald Trump is who it is. Uh, Trump administration cancels detailed review of Obama era mining ban near Minnesota wilderness. Uh, I've, I've already mentioned uh, that story. Okay, let's go back to the first update on plastic pollution uh, in 2018 from the Washington Post. 11 billion pieces of plastic are now spreading diseases across the world's coral reefs. No shit, Sherlock. The plastic sits, well, it, you know, it sinks to the bottom and lands on ocean coral, cutting the coral skin and causing other abrasions, and that is when diseases move in for the kill. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, guys, I've uh, I really got to get my day going that this pile of planet-eating garbage and my hernia call. So I'm just going to move on over from those eco-Nazis at Washington Post and go over here to Endangered Earths uh, the Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth, and I guess it's official that the head cook and bottle washer at uh, Center for Biological Diversity with the great name of Kieran Suckling, after agreeing to be interviewed by Hambone Littletail, apparently has vetted my channel and has now politely, or not so politely, declined my invitation to be interviewed. So it looks like there will be no interview with Mr. Suckling uh, for my Voices of the Doomosphere. And <clears throat> it looks like my Voices from the Doomosphere interview series for 2018, which I was hoping to make a major part of my channel, is just simply drying up and blowing away because nobody that uh, I am uh, inviting to be interviewed is, is accepting my invitation. And this is including several of our own tribes members. You know who you are. I have three outstanding invitations to three of my own tribes members to be, in, to be interviewed on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and they don't want to talk to me. It's lonely at the bottom. Anyway, so we're going to just have to keep depending on Mr. Suckling's weekly roundup. And of course, Mr. Suckling uh, is leading off with Mr. Trump. Donald Trump's offshore drilling plan could cause more than 5,500 oil spills. <clears throat> the Center for Biological Diversity has crunched the numbers. Donald Trump's proposal to dramatically ramp up offshore drilling could lead to 5,571 oil spills dumping 34.4 million gallons of oil into ocean waters off of Alaska, the west and east coast, and the Gulf of Mexico. Do you think so? No shit, Sherlock. This new estimate is more than 10 times what was expected in the worst case scenario for the offshore leasing plan approved by the Farrakh Obama administration. No shit, Sherlock. This is Dr. Abel Valdivia, the center scientist who conducted the analysis. Quote, Trump's plan will be a long, oil-soaked nightmare for our coasts and wildlife. 
No president has ever pushed a drilling plan that would do so much damage along so many American coastlines. It is really astonishing. And, and people continue to support this motherfucker. Okay, from Donald Trump's attacks on the ocean to Donald Trump's attacks on Mexican wolves. If you thought that he was just attacking Mexican humans, how about Mexican wolves? <clears throat> Wolf advocates, including the center, filed a lawsuit Tuesday challenging the Trump administration's deeply flawed recovery plan. A recovery plan for Mexican gray wolves among North America's most endangered mammals. Uh, the plan, which ignored comments from scientists and the public, fails to use the best available science by setting inadequate population goals, cuts off wolves' access to vital recovery habitat, and fails to respond to mounting genetic threats to this special wolf population. No shit, Sherlock. D D D moving along. What's going from uh, from wolves to giant manta rays? Giant manta rays protected as threatened. Giant manta rays, beautiful ocean-going fish that can measure up to 23 feet across, have declined by up to 95% in some parts of the Pacific. So the center supported an allies petition to protect them under the Endangered Species Act. And this week, the National Marine Fisheries Service listed the creatures as threatened under the act. Giant manta rays are killed for use in Asian medicine. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, we're back to the center's Abel Valdivia quote, We have got to move quickly to prevent these gentle giants from being wiped out by overfishing and the unregulated trade of their gills. Okay, I've mentioned this story a couple of times previously. It always bears repeating. Lawsuit challenges bulldozers in Alaskan wildlife refuge. This is the Isambek refuge, wildlife refuge. As the Trump administration has approved a land slop, a land slop. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Hamlet is a land slop. The Trump administration has approved a land swap allowing construction of a new road through the heart of the world's of one of the world's most precious wildlife refugees. So on Wednesday the center and allies filed suit to stop it. Uh, So, uh, the in Interior Department wants to exchange up to 500 acres of wildlife refuge for land owned by the King Cove Corporation, reversing previous administration's conclusions that building a road there will devastate Isenbeck's world-class wetlands which support bears, caribou, salmon, and millions of migrating birds. Uh, 
This is the center's Randy Spivak. Quote, Isambek is one of the most important wildlife refugees on the planet. Impartial experts have repeatedly rejected this destructive project for good reason. And so the reason uh, that it uh, has been rejected by the Trump administration, I can't remember what the bill to the U.S. taxpayers is going to be. Somewhere, was it $300 million? Anyway, as Trump is looking for ways to cut the budget, uh, the federal taxpayers are going to be billed millions and millions of dollars to ram this road across this uh, sensitive Arctic wildlife habitat. So this tiny little Alaskan village has better access to an airport. This is the highest and best use of taxpayer money, according to Donald Trump. Well, the highest and best use is, uh, I'll mention this tomorrow, is to spend $24 million, $24 million to buy Donald Trump a new refrigerator for Air Force One, you know, so he can keep his Diet Cokes cold while he is flying back and forth to his billion dollar little retreat down there in uh, South Florida. We can't have Donald Trump sipping warm diet coats. So $24 million for a new refrigerator for Air Force One. Anyway, from Donald Trump, I guess, is this Jerry Brown? I don't know. It is now 27 cities have resolved to protect California's coast from Trump's assault. As Marin, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties just became the latest of 27 California communities to pass resolutions opposing new fossil fuel drilling off the Golden Gate, off the Golden State's coast. The resolutions are responding to the Trump administration's proposal to open the Pacific Ocean to new oil leases for the first time in more than 30 years. Good Lord, as long as we're in the lawsuit department, here is suit launched to save rare Pacific Island bird. This is the Tinian monarch. The little songbird almost went extinct during World War II and is now once again threatened, this time by the U.S. Marine Corps' plans to expand, tr expand training in the bird's last forest habitat. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Did you realize that tribal communities are facing climate change? Oh, shit, Sherlock. Climate change touches everything, but some of its worst impacts are being felt by tribal communities from the Gulf of Mexico to Arizona to Alaska, tribes in North America are facing disruptions to traditional food sources, upheaval in seasonally based cultural calendars, and relocations of entire communities as rising oceans inundate their lands. Let's see, and we're going to wrap up with the wild and weird story we've heard about frozen uh, alligators and frozen iguanas uh, this winter, and now we see snapping turtles caught in the cold snap. What happens to snapping turtles when winter cold drops below freezing? Unlike some reptiles and amphibians, they cannot survive those temperatures, so they 
just head to the bottom of a pond before its top layer freezes solid. But how do they breathe? Weirdly, they don't. It turns out that snapping turtles can enter a state of metabolic depression, relying on glycogen and glucose as their only fuel source in which they can survive without oxygen for months. I love it. Entering a state of metabolic depression. <laughs> Yes, aren't we all? Snapping turtles, you are not alone in entering a state of metabolic depression here in the end times as we understand how we are so fucked. And with that, I'm going to wrap up part two of this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant and get back to my planet-eating business as usual at hand, which is continuing to drag this mountain of garbage out of my backyard, load it into a gas-sucking truck, and drag it to the landfill, probably giving me a hernia in the process, resulting in thousands of dollars of medical bills uh, and, and of course, I do not have any medical insurance, so we will see how my hernia story play, plays out here as the entire planet is having a fucking hernia here in the end times. So I got to get out there and get her done, smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.